Hello, good afternoon. Um, thank you, Dave, and I uh, just want to thank all the LPAC organizers. Um, Scott and I are very happy to be attending from Vancouver, British Columbia, uh, as um, part of the Society for the New Humanist Paradigm. And I'll, I'll give you kind of a brief run. Um, America from a Canadian perspective, one, uh, also on Canadians from a Canadian's perspective, and on the ideas that Dave was just talking about, and how as a Canadian, you see these ideas as universal. And although this idea um, in the modern form has originated from Helga and, and Lynn's work, but that um, we saw these ideas as universal and what really makes humans human, not humans American or German or American or those crazy Canucks who say A, you know, all the time and they won't get this stuff, you know. <laughs> so, uh, you know, and, and um, within, within that is the idea of a, a, of a citizen, not just a, a subject. And, and I know that's a, that's a very contentious issue around the idea of imperialism. And um, so when, when I was first introduced to these ideas, Paul's been coming up um, for several years now, inspiring us with these uh, ideas uh, and really changing our identity you know, our, our, what we identify with um, as citizens, as part of a process, as part of history, and locating ourselves in this history. And I think by the end of today, you'll see that this peace through development uh, idea has been uh, so contagious that China has adopted it as, an, as a policy, and, and how far it's spreading, and what the potential is. And the potential is the future if we make it happen, right? And so uh, that was so contagious that China adopted it. But uh, we also, um, there's five of us in the Vancouver area who decided to actually start an organization with the intent of spreading these ideas as well and changing our fellow Canadians' identities to that of, of citizens and, uh, and of world citizens, not just Canadians. A um, few myths about the Canadian identity, um, even to Canadians themselves, is uh, that we are all loyalists and that, you know, because we have the, the British Queen um, on our bills and our coins and that, that this, is, this is ingrained in our identity, it, it is to some, very much so, uh, but it is certainly not to a majority, actually. And um, we, we're kind of divorced from, from where that history actually comes, our, our education system. And furthermore, our, our political system is um, not accessible. Uh, history is something that just happens elsewhere. It doesn't happen inside Canada. We just pay our taxes and go to work, you know. Um, politics is not accessible. If you have a problem with your neighbor's dog, you can go talk to your, to your MP or your MLA, but you certainly do not question foreign policy. You, you do not ask questions about that. Um, and it's very subtle, it's very implicit, it's not explicit. But if there's one thing that I could take the opportunity to convey to you as American citizens is that your political system is much more accessible to you. You have the mechanisms in place a lot more for, than for, for Canadians. Um, it's more difficult in Canada and it's different. It's not just worse or better. I'm just saying it's different. But um, joining um, uh, this organization and, and being able to participate in that process um, in a Canadian environment, but also likewise learning about real American history are about the, the best of American history, the best of American intentions, and, and the legacy of Abraham Lincoln with Sun Yat-sen. And, and um, knowing, knowing that, what we've now discovered and what we're, we're attempting to um, revive in Canada is a, an identity that did exist. We just didn't know what existed. But it's um, from living 
uh, as the Canadian neighbor to the United States, I think, um, just to give you a sense, there's, there's probably three Canadian traditions. Uh, one which is not spoken about very often, but is kind of hinted around, uh, is probably the, the, the legacy of the United States that was anti-slavery, and that, that we adopted as part of our identity, which was against slavery, against this system, against that policy, even though our own you know, government and silent agencies, most of them are silent, they're in the background, they wield a lot of power, but they're not in the forefront. We don't, we don't actually hear what kind of closed door secret um, meetings are, are happening, but nonetheless, they, they do direct the policy, and then we look at our policy and we're like, well, I guess that decision was made. I guess we didn't really have a, a, a say in, in that, right? And that's what I mean by divorce from the pol political process. Um, however, that being said, we still had this um, anti-slavery um, identity. And so that, that was a good tradition, of, clearly, that stuck around. There are, you know, that's, that's one aspect of the Canadian identity. Then there's the the loyalists who, of course, don't even understand what an imperial British East India uh, you know, policy really means and what it is that they're supporting. They, they don't understand that. Um, but nonetheless, they're, they're very stalwart <laughs> serfs and will defend their serfdom till, till they die. Um, and but really, the, 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 the most important thing, I think, is that um, the best of America has influenced uh, the best of Canada. And, um, and so we as Canadian citizens are, are looking not just at the political um, uh, process and the, the figureheads in the United States and how that affects the rest of the world, but we're also looking to use American citizens and, and seeing how um, you are affecting the policy and how, how you use your political system to have this humanist um, policy being furthered around the world in the legacy of JFK and Abraham Lincoln and, and these people. So, so as an organization, just um, we're, we started about a year ago. These are some of the ideas we're, we're exploring Canadian uh, history from a whole brand new perspective and it's uh, quite exciting and inspiring. And we're uh, looking at our role in helping this one belt, one road policy come to North America. And um, actually it's not on this, but when you look at the map, um, the, the, the policy, Canada is an, is, is an integral part of that. And so we hope to have this contagion of the, the development policy spread through Canada as well and become a partner with the United States. Um, there are a lot of forces inside Canada who have adopted this imperial identity and um, certainly the environmentalism is a big factor and, um, and also the um, incongruity of identity. Canada has a very, very diverse population, a diverse set of um, uh, legal um, provisions province to province and so there's a lot of a lot of infighting going on between provinces so so we have to uh, we have a lot of work to do but we're continually inspired by the LPAC movement in the United States we're continually inspired by the Schiller Institute um, internationally and uh, of these ideas of Rouge and we hope that you will support them as well thank you